Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Heather Hilliard and I am the co-founder of Caliber Leadership Systems as well as the Striving Styles Personality System. Over our 25 plus years of working closely with executive teams and individual leaders on behavioral change, leadership, and organizational development, combined with our research on personality styles, neuroscience, and the emotional drivers of behavior, we have come to identify four distinct dysfunctional leadership styles. Each has its own challenges as well as its own path towards development. Each represents a different negative impact on the organizations in which they lead, impacts that often can lead to dysfunction within the organization or even just a failure to achieve the true potential of the organization. In this webinar, the third in our series on dysfunctional leaders, we are focusing on the autocratic command and control patriarchal leader. During this webinar, we will explore the characteristics of this leadership style, as well as the implications and costs for organizations. We will give you the top six signs that you are, in fact, working with a patriarchal leader. Then we'll provide you with a few key tips on how to survive working with them in order to ensure your success. Finally, we will give you some specific tips on how to change their behavior as it is possible if you find yourself working with this leadership style. It is our hope that by the end of this webinar on patriarchal leaders, you will be able to identify them by their behavior and impact, know how to deal with them personally to minimize their impact on you, and to understand what it takes to actually change their behavior. They bring great strengths to our organizations, so shifting them out of their dysfunctional behavioral patterns is key to getting the most from these as the name implies, the patriarchal leader refers to a fatherly leadership style, with dominant males using their position of power and authority to control and take care of employees, who in turn are expected to show obedience and loyalty. This type of leader considers themselves to be responsible for their people and promotes the idea of the company being family, with their role, of course, being that of the father, responsible for his employees. Successful and results-oriented, patriarchal leaders use their command and control approach to define what needs to be done and to ensure it happens in the exact manner they want. This leadership style is most effective in situations where there is a need for establishing status quo by defining, organizing, uh, and establishing deadlines. It works in organizations where employees need to focus on performing specific tasks without worrying about making complex decisions. It lets them become highly skilled at performing these duties, which adds value to the business as a whole. However, the downside of the patriarchal leadership style is that employees are stifled and their development is impeded by the need to conform. The patriarchal leader achieves their goals at the expense of flexibility, openness, authenticity, and collaboration. Now, patriarchal leaders are leaders who use their left brain functions excessively to drive their individual agenda and to control their experience and the experiences of others. They tend to support the notion that traditional or left brain behaviors of men are right and preferred, while other behaviors and ways of expressing oneself are wrong. Functional qualities and needs rooted in the left brain include power, control, objectivity, critical thinking, and competitiveness. These are all the hallmark of the patriarchal leader. They negate the value of collaboration, cooperation, emotional expressiveness, empathy, caring, and concern for the experience of employees, which are all traditional right brain functional qualities. Importantly though, as with all the dysfunctional leadership styles, the patriarchal leader is able to develop and to change their behavior. While the patriarchal leader leverages their authority and results orientation to drive organizational success, their autocratic style has negative implications and costs for the organizations in which they work, 
the following are the key implications. Firstly, they create silos. This autocratic style shuts down collaboration as they have no tolerance for cooperating with others. It frustrates their need to be in control and in the position of being the decision maker. Systematically, they do not invest in employee development. They may pay lip service to it and even reference examples of where employees have successfully managed to develop and progress within the organization. However, the reality is, is they do not put money into the development of their staff. Fear is the predominant attribute of the culture. People work to cover themselves so that they do not get in trouble. They won't make decisions or take action without the permission of the patriarchal leader. By not delegating authority and decision making throughout the ranks in the organization or in the team, decision making is slowed by the patriarchal leader as they become the bottleneck, ensuring that everything, every little decision has to flow through them. One of the implications is, is that they tend to assemble around them a workforce that is mediocre. The strong employees tend to move on um, and don't stay over the long term working for these individuals. So you see also high turnover in organizations run by patriarchal leaders. And finally, what we see is that these organizations lose market share over time. They may even fail to achieve their real potential as new competitors emerge and take advantage of the dysfunction of the paternalistic organization to capture more market share. So how do you know that you're working with a patriarchal leader? Well, while we expect our leaders to use their power of authority to lead the business, the patriarchal leader, when working from their self-protective defense system, takes this too far, causing those of us to work with them to have six key experiences that are clear signs that tell us we are, in fact, working with a patriarchal leader. So first of all, you don't get to make decisions. Patriarchal leaders don't believe in empowering their employees. They expect even the most senior people to come to them for decisions. Should someone make a decision without first consulting the patriarchal leader, they are reprimanded and punished. They act as though they are the only ones capable of having good ideas or making decisions. Much of their behavior is to make sure that they retain and increase whatever control they have so that they won't feel anxious about losing control to others. One of our clients who fits the profile of a paternalistic leader would hire in senior level, highly experienced, highly qualified individuals into the role of VP for their area as part of his executive team. He would then proceed to have them working as essentially overpaid administrators. His direct reports would get frustrated with the inability to perform at the level they were used to and that their role would indicate that they should be performing at. And ultimately, this would cause them either to quit or get fired if they were too vocal about the lack of autonomy and their frustration for the situation. So the result here for employees really is demotivation and low morale. The lack of involvement from the employee in the decision-making process leads employees to not assume ownership over their work. It, it drops the level of morale and their level of engagement. And we see high turnover in these situations um, because employees really aren't being empowered to actually do their job. Subordinates also end up becoming heavily dependent on the leader and actually can become quite useless in running operations if their leader isn't there, getting paralyzed with actually making decisions in their absence. So this also causes the patriarchal leader to have an excessive amount of work themselves. Their stress level goes up, their frustration with their workforce increases, and so we get stuck in this bind uh, where the patriarchal leader really is the bottleneck to the organization. The second key sign that you are working for a patriarchal leader is that the autocratic command and control style of this leader tolerates no disagreement or dissension. Really, you have to become a yes man or woman. They really aren't interested in your opinion unless it mirrors their own, forcing you to agree with anything they say, whether they have expertise in that area that they're talking about or not. I can always tell when one of my clients is a patriarchal leader. 
They'll hire me in for my expertise, bring me in to meet with them, and then proceed to tell me exactly how I am to do the work I've been hired to do for them. They won't ask for my opinion. They won't even ask whether or not their idea is the best idea. I'm simply there to listen to them, agree, and then do it exactly as I have been told. I can still recall a situation years ago where this happened and being so shocked by the unwillingness of my client to let me drive the process that I'd been hired for. All I could do was sit and take notes as they spoke to me for over an hour. Of course, I regrouped afterwards, but it left an impression on me as to what her employees experience when being delegated a task. So what's the result? In this case, we do foster, um, the patriarchal leaders fosters a culture of fear um, and it brings out really the worst in people. Employees have to resort to gain favor uh, by agreeing with everything they say. And other employees start to accuse them of being yes men or women. And so we start to see that um, the differences in behavior start to emerge. Fear, adaptation, self-preservation become the norm and the focus of our employees. Competition and a lack of communication, cooperation, and organizational community are also norms for the culture. Really, at the end of the day, employees are more concerned with their survival and not with the overall goals of the organization or what's in the best interest of the business. So, tip number three or cue number three, your stress levels are through the roof. Because they are feared by the, their employees, the work environment in the, w- with a patriarchal leader is highly stressful and tense. While working for the other dysfunctional styles can be frustrating and anxiety producing, the patriarchal leader is, causes the greatest stress for employees. I recall one entrepreneur that I worked with who had brought me in to help stabilize her team as new hires would not last and the turnover really was getting in the way of the growth of the organization. One employee I spoke with who had survived there, and I use the word survived, there longer than most, explained to me that the stress she experienced was so great, she lost her eyebrows within the first six weeks of joining the organization. And now that she'd been there even longer, she was experiencing other physical side effects to the stress that she was experiencing. This woman was only in her 20s. So what's the impact here? So employees become demotivated, on guard, fearing that they're going to do something wrong. Patriarchal leaders do not see that they are the cause for the lack of motivation. They really do assume that motivation comes from creating a structured set of rewards and punishments, and then they proceed to hand them out freely. This leads just to further employee stress. So the workplace becomes rigid, excessively demanding, and we see signs of high absenteeism, hostility, uh, lowered productivity. So it's the fear that that is created by the patriarchal leader that is driving the stress levels of the employees. So the fourth clue is that um, you stop trying because you really can't do your best work. Going back to my client that hired in VPs only to micro control or micromanage their work, I would watch these folks come in with great enthusiasm. Now this was a high profile, really great success story of an organization. And the newly hired employees were so excited to be part of this organization and being able to make their mark and really help to take the company to the next level. It was something to watch them go from this place of enthusiasm and excitement to frustration and then ultimately to apathy. They were defeated and realized that no matter what they did or how hard they tried, it just wouldn't matter. They just stopped bothering. Heartbreaking to watch both from the experience of these individuals as well as in terms of the destructive impact it was having on this gem of a company. So what's the outcome here? What's the impact? Really, we watch employees become, as I said, disengaged because of the dominating behavior of the patriarchal leader. When power and control resides at the top of the organization and there's little distributed to employees down the ranks, the achievement of employee potential is stalled. And while care may be given to hire the best people into the organization, to Consideration is not given to the distribution of authority and actually allowing these people to use their talents and abilities in the service of the organization. Really, there's little expected of the employees as the authoritarian patriarchal leader is driving uh, what it is that's being done and driving the decision making around it. So talented employees soon leave, which is what contributes to there being a mediocre workforce and high turnover in the patriarchal leader's organization. 
So number five reason, the way you know that you're working for a patriarchal leader is there's a lack of trust amongst the peers. So patriarchal leaders do create strong feelings in people. So you're either with us or against us, really, is the type of mentality they use. They decide who's valuable to them and who isn't valuable to them based on their perceived usefulness. To the patriarchal leader, you can be in favor one day and out of favor the next if you cease to be useful to them. One additional thing to note is that because men have greater value to patriarchal leaders, men tend to hold the most important and visible roles. So whether it be executives, politicians, public leaders, women who do hold these positions are expected to behave according to their roles and adapt to the cultural norms or, or behave as men would. A client of mine recently experienced a patriarchal leader being hired into the COO role in her organization. Prior to that, her work environment was positive and she and all the other executives were highly engaged. In the course of six months, most of the senior leaders either quit or were fired. These were experienced individuals who until then were leading a high growth, highly profitable business. They were collaborative and had strong relationships. She watched as people stopped being honest with each other, started worrying more about what they said or did, and even she, someone who is normally very assertive, stopped sharing her opinions or concerns even with her peers for fear that it would make its way back to the COO and there would be some form of reprisal to her. So what's the implication for the organization? Well, the subjectivity of the patriarchal leader causes employees to fear for their jobs and to fear what it is or to be afraid of falling out of favor or doing something wrong. So the leadership style then becomes quite parental. And as a result, employees will tend to behave like children in response to the parental style of the patriarchal leader. They become more concerned with their survival than doing their best work and achieving their potential. And finally, last one, by now you've likely seen a theme around these six signs. Direct and authoritative patriarchal leaders have to be the one in control. They expect everyone to adapt and conform to their rules of the game. The message is that their way is the right way of doing things and employees should follow without question. They act like dictators, becoming increasingly dominant or aggressive should the way they want things done be challenged. They lose their temper when contradicted or disrespected, believing that no one else is really entitled to challenge them, even if they have asked for other people's opinions. Their peers and direct reports are intimidated by the patriarchal leader, causing them to acquiesce and give in even when they know it's not the right thing to do. So under the patriarchal leader, innovation by others is stopped. As one client put it, to raise the idea that you could do something better in the organization is akin to telling the leader it is being done wrong. It simply results in the messenger being shot. You are not expected to think, create, innovate, or improve. Just do what you are told to do. So now that you can recognize the fact that you are working with a patriarchal leader, let's move on to talking about how to survive your experience. The most important thing that we coach clients around when they are in this situation is to maintain their confidence as it can be very challenging. And when you do, the cost to you is much greater. The fact is you will probably work for or with this leadership style at one point or another within your career. It's hard not to, as they get promoted for their ability to get things done. They find their way to the top of organizations, and some are entrepreneurs that build successful companies that grow up to a certain point. So first off, surviving a patriarchal leader. Don't react to their behavior. Patriarchal behavior is self-limiting. It is a form of self-protective behavior. And the motivation of the patriarchal leader is to maintain control. Control over their own fears by controlling everyone else around them. These leaders cause automatic fight-flight reactions in others, even in their managers that, that they report into. Becoming forceful back only causes power struggles with them. They will react to this by getting angry back at you. So respond, don't react. Notice your feelings about their behavior and figure out how to approach their behavior objectively and consistently. 
In the example I gave of my client telling me how to do my job, I spent the time listening and chose not to disagree in that meeting. I then regrouped and came back with my recommendation on how the process should unfold with some options to allow her to stay in control of the process. This allowed the situation to get diffused as opposed to me reacting in the moment to being told how to do my job. The fact is, is that accepting the limitations of the patriarchal leader goes a long way to managing their behavior. They have to learn how their behavior impacts on others, and that only happens over time. Often people feel victimized and let the patriarchal leader have their way without trying to engage or manage them. Contrary to what you might like feel like, the, your adaptive reaction to the patriarchal leader is not their fault. So how you choose to respond to their behavior, that is something that you own. And your fear is what can get in the way of your success in dealing with this manager, this peer, or this direct report. So you want to stay focused on the issues rather than, than on how they are making you feel in that particular situation. If they expect too much of you, let them know that they're trying to get um, that trying to get everything done in the timeline they are asking for will result in the possibility of substandard work. If they get angry when you boundary them, empathize with their frustration of not getting everything done the way they want and ask what their priorities. Don't back down or give in to unrealistic demands. Just because you are afraid you will be fired or get in trouble doesn't mean that you will or that you should not try to influence their behavior. So that's why it's so critical that you manage your own fear in this context. Many employees fear asking the patriarchal leader for what they or their department wants or needs. They're afraid that the patriarchal leader will say no. So they keep limping along, hoping that something will change. The fact is you need to build a business case to demonstrate why what you want is needed and what the benefits will be when it's finished. The reasons and benefits may seem perfectly obvious to you and others who are intimately involved with it, but may not be so obvious to the patriarchal leader. Being able to defend your proposal and influence their decision cannot be done when you come from a place of fear. So putting together the business case actually moves you out of a place of fear and actually putting you into the leading out. When coaching leaders who work with this style, we anticipate getting no the first, second, and possibly the third time. So not taking the no personally and focusing on what the business needs, as well as coming back with different influence strategies, is what ultimately works over the long term with this leadership style. Too often, people who work for the patriarchal leader stops after asking after the first no. So we influence the patriarchal leader by presenting things in a way that has them seem like it is their idea. So it's important not to be territorial when an idea can improve the work life of you and your colleagues. At the end of the day, if your idea is adopted, you and the business will benefit. You never know when the patriarchal leader will refuse something of benefit just because they didn't think of it. So don't add to the problem by getting into a power struggle with them give the idea to them and make it look like it was theirs. And finally, surviving the patriarchal leader means not opposing or disagreeing with them, particularly publicly. That is a sure way to get turfed from their good graces. So go to them after the fact to discuss the possible fallout from their ideas and approaches. The one-on-one -on -one approach is less threatening. Don't be intimidated by their gruff manner or take their behavior personally. Many paternal, patriarchal leaders will devalue or call you stupid if you disagree or point out the flaws in their ideas publicly. So now we can identify them and know what to do to survive working with them. Moving forward, ideally, we want to change their behavior and the negative implications for the business. It is possible. The behaviors of the patriarchal leader are self-protective. It's their automatic defensive pattern. With a focus on how the brain actually learns and changes behavior, we can shift the dysfunctional patterns of this leadership style. First, now one of the first things you want to do to change the behavior of a patriarchal leader is to manage their performance. And this often does not happen because even their direct manager can often be intimidated or frightened uh, by the behavior of the patriarchal leader. So it is important to make sure that their performance is actually being managed. 
Personality type assessments such as the Striving Styles or the Myers-Briggs can be very useful for you during the recruitment, the development, and the promotional process. The patriarchal leader tends to be the Leader Striving Style or the ESTJ under the Myers-Briggs. So make sure that their behavior is actually being managed through ongoing feedback as well as being held accountable for them to behave in accordance with the expectations um, of the organization. It's also important as part of managing their performance that you ensure that they hire people who are actually able to manage up and influence their behavior. So don't let them hire insecure or inexperienced people underneath them who are simply going to adapt and become yes people. Leadership coaching is essential to helping the patriarchal leader develop empathy and tolerance for feedback. The coach needs to understand their personality structure, the defenses they use, and be able to challenge their idea of what employees need without making them feel inferior. Now, it's important to understand that not all coaches can work with this particular leadership style. It's important that you find them one that will not be intimidated by their behavior and who is really comfortable boundering them and being a directive to them because the patriarchal leader will need to be led as they tend to behave as though they have no problems. In fact, they tend to believe that they are emotionally intelligent and it's just everyone else that has problems. So working with them to develop the relational emotional side of their brain, especially building empathy and tolerating input and feedback from others needs to be done over time because they are so rigid in their idea of how people should behave and because of their need for control, this process can take longer to achieve, uh, which is why coaching is so important. I had a conversation recently with a patriarchal leader who's having challenges at home with his preteen daughter. So having just gone through a leadership team session with us using the Striving Styles personality system, he asked me for help as to how he could use this information in his relationship with his daughter. Oh, great, great question. I explained that she was likely reacting to his autocratic approach. When I suggested he have her do the assessment so that he could, um, he could look at her style in relation to his to better understand her needs and what was causing her to act out in reaction to his parenting, he replied, I don't care what her personality is. I just want to know how to fix it. So Here's where that emotional intelligence training is really useful for the patriarchal leader so they can start moving out of that that rigid place that they exist within to really being able to take in the emotional needs of others and have empathy for those needs. 360 feedback is a really useful tool when participants in particular are assured confidentiality so we can get past the fear of providing feedback on the patriarchal leader. Feedback, which includes consensus around dissatisfaction, poor performance, really does provide us with support for leadership development, the transfer of that leader, or even dismissal, as the case may be. Many employees report that they are just waiting for the paternalistic leader to be fired. 360 degree feedback process can really demonstrate the impact of the behavior of the patriarchal leader so that they don't deny their contributions to the issues. So this for us has proven to be um, the most effective technique for beginning the development process for a patriarchal leader. For example, one client that we worked with, he believed he was an amazing leader and that his team loved working for him, that he was a, had a really high performing team, he had great relationships with his peers and even with his boss. The feedback in the 360 process strongly disagreed with his self-concept. And while at first he tried to dismiss the feedback, eventually we were able to get him to acknowledge that it was not how he wanted to be seen and that there was a gap between his self-concept and reality based on the information in that, that 360 feedback process. From there, he was far more open to the coaching and the development than he was when his boss first mandate, mandated it for him. So that concludes our webinar on the autocratic controlling yet results-oriented patriarchal leader. Uh, Like leaders, organizations can take on these characteristics and then the process undermine the achievement of their potential. We work with both individuals and organizations to help shift this dysfunctional behavioral patterns. 
Thanks for joining us today. I hope you found the material useful as you consider your experiences with the patriarchal leader. If you want to learn more, please I encourage you to sign up for our newsletter or learn how to develop your own leadership style by taking the Striving Styles Personality Assessment. Thanks again.